Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Your Mental. Just a reminder that this podcast is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. I know they are hard to find, and I get that. I have a bunch of resources on my website if you need them, but I am not your clinician. I am a psychologist, but I am not your psychologist. So if you need any specific help, please look for the help of a licensed mental health professional. Learn all you can learn from the podcast. Enjoy the episode. So everyone, welcome again to Mind Your Mental. Today, we are joined by Shaheem McLaurin, who is a Black, gender, queer, licensed social worker and therapist and influencer born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. Say, say dog. I don't have okay, an okay, accent. Okay, dog. okay, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> and they are currently stationed in Brooklyn, New York, with upwards of 500 thought followers. Shaheem is, uses their platform to address a wide range of social and mental health issues impacting people of color, patriarchy impacted people, which is all of us, and members of the LGBTQ plus community. They have built a loyal community around their provision of mental health advice, support, self-care tips, and bashing Sagittarius's as well. Welcome to... <laughs> I don't remember adding that last Did you part. Not... <laughs> oh my gosh, you gotta check out your website because like, it says that. I mean, don't check it out now. If it, has, if it happens to disappear, you won't have to believe me that it was there. But yes, welcome to the show. To be here, honestly, this is wow. You're one of my favorite... A dream podcast. Um, then you're like one of my favorite licensed therapists because you have some sense. I like being able to see licensed clinicians actually speak about, you know, things from an appropriate perspective. You also center marginalized voices, which a lot of people do not do or don't know how to do. And I think you very much have a good aspect of accountability within your content space. I very much appreciate it. Plus you make me laugh because <laughs> you be so shady sometimes. I love it. I love it. Hey everyone, just a reminder that Mind Your Mental is not just a podcast. It is also a amazing community if I do say so myself it's phenomenal I mean you get more access to me what more could you want in this life if you want to join the community if you're not already on the community go to my social media my social media is the same Raquel Martin PhD and DM me the word community so you can get details on joining this amazing flipping community you get more access to me y'all like <laughs> I'm a delight all right all right hope to see you there that means the world coming from you. I literally <laughs> shout you out in every... I'm so serious. I don't think you understand. You are like my favorite therapist creator. Thank like, you. I literally shout you out in every podcast I do. They always oh, who do you aspire to be like in the space? I'm like, Dr. Rocket Meyer. Like, that is... That's the pinnacle. You are I the standard it. to me. I think you are literally eons of, ahead of like me and I just admire and support everything that you do I'm Thank honored you I started I, when I first started following you it was I forget what the video was but it just made me laugh and when you know with me you make me laugh I'm a follower uh, you know like I think somebody had said something crazy to you and you were like you, you have a textbook pause and you were like so I'm a uh, I'm gonna say something <laughs> and y'all gonna be mad and I was like ooh, anger me and I was just crack it at like it's just very good but <laughs> but I love the fact that you center marginalized voices I love your best friend even though I have not met your best friend but in my opinion I met your best friend and how there's also I think you do a, a fantastic job of combining the aspect of mental health and content creation and talking about what you're saying, as well as, I love seeing your hobbies. To this day, your your cheesecake cups and stuff, I made yours and mine at a party. And my friend's best, my, my husband's best friend said, yours are better than mine. Your snickerdoodle <laughs> cheesecake cups. He was like, because <laughs> he knew I made both of them, but he didn't know they weren't both my recipe. So I gave him the chocolate one and he was like, oh, this is good. And then I gave him the snickerdoodle recipe and he told my husband, he was like, yo, you got to try this one though. And my husband was like, oh. Look, I do have a lot of hobbies. My main goal in everything that I do is to humanize like being a therapist yes. because there is, we will get into it when we talk about what inspired me to be a therapist because it was a long story. I didn't even want to be one, really? but I am a human being first. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a person first, everything else second. And I know like that there's this like weird wall that is created through society where people like view, like I often view us as these like big mighty figures and I'm just a person. 
I'm just a girl. That's <laughs> it. You know, I'm one of the girls. That's I'm it. Just a girl standing in front of a girl. Okay, so tell me about what made you decide to want to be a therapist. Because I, I decided to want to be a psychologist because I just, it was psych and black history were like one of the few classes that didn't bore the heck out of me. So what made you decide to want to be a clinician? So I really didn't want to be a therapist at all. I was actually vehemently against it. It was, I went into, so it's such a long and windy story, but there's this thing where if you believe the universe just guides you where you need to go. <laughs> I was a community organizer since I was in high school. Like I was co-founding organizations. Like I like ran like community like cleanups. I did. I was a organizer in Baltimore mm -hmm. first. And that was like the main, my main focus. Like I wanted to be like the best community organizer I could be. So I was connected to so many people when I was organizing in the Southeast of Baltimore that I came across this one woman. I will never forget her. She's love her down. Agatha. And she was a social worker. And I saw her get a bus full of people and took them down to D.C. so they can protest for uh, DACA rights. And I was like so mesmerized at that. I was just like, how do I do this type of work at this scale? Like, I wanted to be the best community organizer possible. And she was like, I'm a social worker. And she was specifically a community social worker, I a macro social worker. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then another friend of mine had a social worker friend who was a therapist. And they were just like, you have everything it takes to be a social worker. You will be an excellent social worker. You need to apply. And I went to go apply for NYU, which is where I went for grad school for social work. And it was, I went to go open a website to apply and it was two weeks past the deadline. And this is how I knew it was like something that was supposed to be because my friend, I was like, oh, it looks like I can't. And my friend was like, email them and see if they can make an exception for you. I did. Lo and behold, they made an exception. I got into NYU and uh, won so many twists and turns in grad school, but I went to grad school on a macro track. I was trying to be a macro social worker. In fact, I beefed with so many classmates of mine because I really did not like the way that they had um, viewed uh, the macro lens because they, they lacked so much of it because they went for an easy route to being a therapist, like which I thought was like, you know, I know you probably as a psychologist has your, have your own opinions on social work therapists. But, <laughs> my but mommy is say, a social worker. Like a lot of my I class love social, social workers. Listen, I grew up going on, well, not supposed to, like, home visits, you know, you know, nah, like, that like that, I mean, you know, that was when it wasn't illegal to keep your child in the car, but it was always illegal, but, you know, <laughs> but no, social worker, I think that's why my lens is always so different, because I think some people, when it comes to psych, they stay in the, I, I've always been brought up when it comes to wraparound services, I think that's why I see stuff way differently than most clinicians, there's community psychologists, mm -hmm. I didn't even know about them beforehand, but apparently what I do, the way I see stuff is actually more like a community psychologist than a clinical psychologist. And that's because I was reared by a social worker. I, I know I'd be like, okay, yeah, this is all well and good depression. Mm. Do we have a social program or something? What are we, can we have something tan? Can we have something <laughs> about, oh, they're depressed. Yeah, they're depressed. They can't eat, yo. Let's get some food. Can we get some tokens? Back in the day when there were tokens. Hello? Well. But that's how I always see stuff. If, if I had known there was a such <laughs> thing as community psych, I probably would have went to a community psych program, but I went to a medical and clinical psych program and I just bring my, my mom with me in every single room to be real with you. So social workers, <laughs> love you. My <laughs> classmates were not those type of social workers. They were very much so the kind that were white and very much oriented towards white supremacy, which was a big problem for me. And just, I also had my own, the fact I was, that I was in school for social worker, I was in foster care at some point mm -hmm. as a kid. So I already had my contention with the, the state and like being a social worker. I never saw myself working for like ACS, which is what I wound up doing eventually, um, which is like child protective services mm -hmm. in New York, for those who don't know. And it just was like such a wild turn. I went through so much racism at NYU. Googleable fact, actually. It's really, it was a lot. But because of that, I was put in the purview of my mentor slash one of the greatest women I've ever met in my life, Dr. Linda LaSalle Bryant, who I started working with as her graduate assistant. And she connected me with so many people like 
her friends who actually ran ACS, like she did so much wonderful work in her day. And like when it came time for me to graduate, I was already doing like my, you know, you have to do your clinical track no matter what when you go to school for social work. So I was already doing like my practice and stuff like that. And she was, I was going to graduate and go into like admin or go into more community social work stuff. And she was like, mm, no, you should get your boots on the ground. See if you like it before you jump and do the more macro stuff. I need you to get your individual micro stuff yeah. onto. And I was like, Ugh, whatever. <laughs> Listening to her, I was dragging my feet the whole time. And lo and behold, like when I got my first job, which she helped me to get because she connected me with her friend out of grad school, I was doing family therapy. And it just, I took to it like a fish in water. Like it was just such a natural click for me. And I just fell in love with the practice of doing the practice of therapy. It was like such a beautiful like experience. And I noticed like even my colleagues, like my supervisor, like everybody was just like, wow, you are like naturally like good at this. It's just been a marriage since. I cannot leave it alone. I did not want to be this though. It's funny how some sometimes the universe work, everything that I said I would avoid, I became. And I don't regret it because I feel like my voice in this space makes sense. And I think we need more people like you and like me and so many other people I can name like in this space. And I use social media, like part of why I got into using social TikTok specifically was because I was like, if I'm going to be doing all this micro work, I'm more of a macro leaning person. If I'm going to be doing more, more micro work, like I need to be trying to like combat like something, some type of system. And my goal was to like try and bring down the ivory tower a little bit more or that paywall between people and mental health resources and anything I could do. So that's how I got here. But I definitely did not want to be a therapist. That was not my goal at all. My undergraduate degrees are in political science and women and gender studies. Like I, in no way, <laughs> it was not like a, I came into school like, I'm going to be a therapist. It just happened. And I'm glad that it did because, you know, I love it. I actually love what I do. I love that. And I think it's obvious. I think one of the differences between, I see more people on social media, like as licensed therapists and I think you have to be more, I don't know, like more jazzed about what you do, but you can tell that you love what you do versus when I go to like conferences or if I go to some kind of things, these people just look miserable. And these are the clinicians. And I'm like, I mean, crack a smile, yo. What are we doing here? I feel like the reason why I did social media is because I, one, I wanted to make resources more accessible because I totally get there's not enough resources but two, I wanted to humanize the aspect of space. That's one of the, that's one of my favorite things is, yes, I love the fact that you are very good at translating something that are pretty complicated concepts into something that somebody can get in like a three minute video. And not many people can do that. I've seen people try and they suck at it. And I'd be like, well, let's stick to the articles. But also I like being able to see different <laughs> aspects of your life, like you making rugs and like the snickerdoodle cups and Afropunk. I like being able to see that clinicians are people because it makes it less daunting to see these individuals. There's no, you know, you don't have to feel like there are, there's a hierarchy because we both know that therapy is like a collaborative relationship. I don't think people realize, you know, I think it's because I think I'm good at this too, but like we make it look so simple. I don't think people realize that they're taking in pretty complicated concepts or like really well-researched and thought out things when it comes to psychoeducation, because you just happen to put your judge on it and, you were able to make it into a minute and 30 seconds, but it's like, yo, I went to school for this, yo. Like, I know I make it look easy. And I mean, to me, it is, yeah. but, like, <laughs> but you know, like, this is actually, you share very good concepts. And I think people, I think it's why people sometimes get it messed up when it comes to therapy or it comes to social media. Oh, no, it's, you know, it's like folk wisdom. And it's not, I just do that. I do this very well. So I make it look simple, but it's not. That's an honor. Yeah. You. You, I, have, I cannot emphasize. I've learned so much from you. And yeah, I do try and make that's. I'm glad that you brought that up because as a hood book <laughs> myself, like somebody who comes from, you know, I'm a first generation student. Like I like first gen graduate. Like I, I had to learn a lot of these concepts from the, from scratch. Yeah. I had to learn how to go to school and be in higher education from scratch. It was really important for me 
to have people translate a lot of these things that were inaccessible to me for so long and to make the transition into higher education and stuff easier. So I definitely try my best to make this information as accessible to people as possible. But I also know, I will add this pin, I also know that there are some concepts that are complicated and they have to be complicated because they're complex concepts. And that is another thing that, yeah, I try not to do as much about challenging these misconceptions around or oversimplifications of these very daunting or like heavier concepts. I hate pop psychology so bad. It it, it really irks my nerves. Like the over over pathologizing, like simple behavior, like really irks me. You know, we all fight in that battle. I think so too. There there are certain words that I just never thought I would just be so sick of. I don't really like the word self care. I don't like triggers. I don't like you know all the words that that have to use all the time. If I hear narcissist again, I'll be like, oh my God, Lord have mercy. Oh my God. That's that one. Yeah. Everybody and a narcissist. narcissist <laughs> with like, you know, you know, it, I, with mother wounds. And I just be like, all right, yo, this is, this is a lot. And you know, what's even, you know, as two people on social media, so pop psychology, like it's sexier. So like it makes it stuff seem simple and like, it'll get clicked on more. And I always feel like that's ridiculous because people will want simplify simplification for stuff that's not simple. Like people are simple. We're not black or white. We're gray. And it can be frustrating because I'll be like, I'm surprised I popped off on social media because to be honest, I ain't doing that. Listen, I'm talking. I, my, my students one time were just like, Dr. You do a good job. Thank man. you. <laughs> They're like, Dr. Burr, I didn't know you was TikTok famous. I got to listen to you now. I said, you got to listen to me now. I am your professor. You got to listen to me anyway. Uh, and I'm like, I will say... One. The clout machine. Clout is one hell of a drug. It make people go crazy. It does, especially my students. And I'd be crazy like, I will not tell in a you, derogatory sense. Jesus. That's a, let me tell you That's another thing about social media. People telling me what I can't say. I said somebody was like, "You can't say the c word." I said, first of all, I I, I can, but I I look back at my head. I said, "Did I say the c word? <laughs> when the freak did I say that?" And they said, "Crazy." I said, "If you don't get out my face, if you don't get out my face." <laughs> Oh my God. I'm here like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, is my cousin that? Yo, for real, like, gosh. That's another thing, too. I specifically, as a black clinician, like, this is one of my goals, right? They try so badly to divorce us from culture, mm-hmm. like, specifically black culture, because it's viewed as inappropriate in the mental health space. I have to say this because if you grow up in a black space, you know, as, and I don't want to dismiss a flippant use of terms that are just no longer appropriate, but you know, crazy isn't always going to be like, it's going to slip in from time to time, but it's not always directed at somebody or describing someone's mental yeah. health. I don't know. It's just, it is, it's, we might have to edit that one out because I don't feel like going back and forth about that. But, you know, people have tried to, people have tried it with me and it's just like, baby, we, Come on. You know, I don't mean it in a derogatory sense. And I'm not like, it's just, yeah. I say it all the time. Mm. I, I do. I really, one of the most common things I say is that's crazy. Just like that. Like I, I say it all the time. Like, you know, like I, I very much say it all the time. And I've had people say that I've had one or two people and be like, do you think that's a negative statement? And I'm like, do I, what, crazy? I, you know, crazy isn't a clinical diagnosis. I'm not, I'm not diagnosing anyone. Also, this isn't therapy. And you, you don't want to hear me say crazy. God, don't get me started you know, on that. You don't, hear me say, you don't want to hear me say crazy. You should probably go say I say less. Please. So like when it comes to license therapy, being online, I think people, one, have an issue confusing therapy and just we're providing psychoeducation. And I always say, you want to know the difference between being in session with me and psychoeducation because you didn't receive an invoice and you're not my patient. I remember someone saying, you know, I, I would just think that you oh, would be uh, better you know, equipped to somebody said something to me crazy. So of course I said something to a crazy girl because I'm like, <laughs> um, <laughs> they hate I, really, I really want you to realize I'm not the one and I do this for fun. Please, it's my time to shine. Thank you. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I needed a break. No. And they are like, I would expect more from you. And I said, I don't know why. <laughs> They're like, what if you hurt their feelings? I said, I hope I did. I hope it stinks. Because sometimes the reason why people <laughs> act like they don't have any sense is because you there are some people who just have never been cussed out in their life. And you can tell because what right. makes you think that's an appropriate thing to say to me? Well, me and a psychologist is what I do. It's not who I am. 
okay, this ain't changed nothing but the pay scale, honey. My degrees ain't changed nothing but the pay scale. But I, I, I'm from North Philly all day. <laughs> Listen, I'm from I'm from over. Here. Listen, I'm from down the hill, and I tell people I am a. I'm a bush queen, a, a gay from the hood, like baby, who grew up with a lot of sisters. I have a very nasty mouth. Please don't uh, <laughs> talk to me. That's it, because I, I like to keep it respectful. But I can get I can get in the gutter with the best. Right? So please leave me alone and I'll leave you alone. That's why every time somebody says something mm-hmm. to me crazy, I start to reply by laughing because I'm like, oh, this is about to be so fun. Thank you for this. <laughs> I was bored. I was, you know, I was in the dark, but now I see. That this is about to, this is for me. You're such a Sagittarius. <laughs> oh my God. You're such a Sagittarius. You gotta stop okay, denying You know what? Okay, this yeah. is a very good point. That this is, is a- talking about astrology, which anyone who knows me knows it's not a thing. I do not believe it's a thing. However, I will say one of the, one of the things I love about your page is that I will actually watch your astrology posts. You, one of my favorite series, y'all need to watch this series. One of my favorite well, series you. is when you do, you're like treating each sign. And I don't I don't know specifically what the individual signs will, how they act. But either way, like as a clinician, I relate and it just cracks me up. Where each, okay, you'd be like, thank you so much for that <laughs> 50 page dissertation um, in response to me just asking, <laughs> how was your day? But you also didn't answer the question and I didn't ask for this. You know, like even that, I'll be like, I totally get it. And one of the reasons why I was like, we want to talk about this because one of one of your one of your posts said, listen, I'm not saying if you, is, is anything wrong with not be, believing in astrology. But I, I think you said, I would really look at you. I don't really know if I could trust you. And I said, what? I mean, look at the numbers, you know, Jay-Z said men lie, women lie. Numbers don't lie. Where, where are the numbers in just, astrology? I'm just saying. Where are the numbers? Tell me where the numbers in astrology are. I mean, even statistically, if you look at like full moons, like coincide with, and it's correlation. I know, correlation, not causation. But like coincides with like more violence. Like that's literally a statistic that is provable. There are more calamities during eclipses. Like that is a thing. You can literally Google that. There, like, you know. We could get into it every day. I, mean, or all day but like, I don't, the I, don't is, I just, I don't, I just, I never have. And you said it's very much a professor thing. But I, before I was a professor, I just was just like, <laughs> you mean to tell me, oh, okay. Like, set, <laughs> you're a Sagittarius. You were born a professor. That's the, that's the reality. I, I, like, I just, I can't. Sagittarius rules over the ninth house of higher education. I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. And you even mentioned, what did you say? You said that you're a Sagittarius rising, even though. Anyone who looks at Shaheen's page, you tell me that they do not hate Sagittarius. Like anyone, listen, I like legit. When I, when I do the reel for this, I want y'all, this is going to be the clip. This is the sound bite. You, t- you go to their page and you tell me that they don't, that they just, they can't stand Sagittarius. I kid you not. I love everybody. No, lies. Lies you tell. Lies you tell. And I'm, you know, I'm going to go through, I'm going to scroll through your page and be like, this is an example. This is an example. I'm going to tag you too. Every time it'd be like, what are the top five worst signs and why are they Sagittarius's? What are the, what are the people, I mean, what are the people that will, you know, try to destroy your life and say, get over it. And why are they Sagittarius's? What are, like, I just feel like, I, oh, no. I like, are we? What? Where did this? What? No, Sagittarius wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do what? That's more of a Capricorn trait. What? Um, Okay, so what are my traits? You tell me my traits because I'm a Sagittarius. My birthday is December 19th. Okay, look. So, look, Sagittarius are so much more than just like a loud mouth and not wanting to be tied down. I know that's what y'all are pegged down at, but it's true. Like, y'all are, like, people who are very flighty. Ah. Y'all don't like being controlled whatsoever. Oh. Your freedom is very important. Yeah. Y'all are very brash. You will say the you will say the thing that nobody wants to hear, but need, the people need to hear. Y'all are very honest and very blunt. Y'all is are... That- no, it is not everyone. <laughs> I think you know that. <laughs> you know that's not everyone. But look, it's so much more. So the ninth house in astrology, like every sign rules over, in modern astrology, every sign rules over, like a house is just like an, a different area of life. 
And Sagittarius rules over the ninth house of like higher education, international travel and business dealings, philosophy, things like that. So like you being a Sagittarius and a professor is just kind of like on the nose <laughs> and it's hilarious because that just makes a lot of sense. Okay, but what's the other um, thing? Because you said you're a rising. Are... What's the rising thing? What's my rising thing? Okay, we need to do your birth chart. That's it. We need to do your birth chart. Do you know what time you were born? <sighs> I do. I was born at 351. Yeah, hey, we got to do your uh, your birth chart. We can't just keep. So I just sent you, you this link. You got to go in there and do your neighbor. Because you, you can't not know your chart. At least your big three is really important in this day and age. Yes. I will tell you. That's just the a, that's it a wasn't thing. In, it's your page that actually one of my best friends, Katie, and she's been trying to get this chart thingy for a minute. And every time I'm like, girl. No, I told you I'm the only per. I am the only person around me who's just. Like, and every single time I say that, they say the same thing. Oh, girl, you know she's a secretary, so just let her so, do her thing. This is how she's going yeah, to be. Y'all don't like to do um, anything. Y'all not. Nobody can tell y'all what to do. Trust me. And I'm a sad rising, so I do get it. Like many, like I'm not one who's quick to listen to what other people <laughs> have to say about what I should be doing. But look. Here's my thing. Astrology is also a great tool when it comes to therapy and mental health. I don't use it a lot. The only time that I use it with my clients, because people ask me this all the time, do you like bring astrology into your sessions? I'm like, no. Like, why would I do that? That's not what I'm trying to do. But if a client comes to me, hey, this is my birth chart, I would like you to read it. We can look at it and then we can assess it together because it's a good tool to explore identity. Like, how do you feel about these things? Like what it says about you? Do you agree with these things? Do you align with these things? How do you feel about like this area of your life? Do you think this lines up with the, your chart? It's just a tool. And there are many tools that we can use. I don't care if we're using a screwdriver or a birth chart. What matters to me is that we're being introspective and exploring the self. That's it. Okay, so I don't know much about it, but I Why do. are you so averse to it? Because it's not a thing! I just don't, I just don't, I just don't, I just don't, I just, I can't even, I just don't, I don't, it's just not a thing to me. I, you know, I'll be honest, I've answered this question many times and it's never a real answer because I'm just like, I just don't, I just, I don't, it's not a thing to me. I'll be like, oh, ooh, Sagittarius is don't like to get punched in the face. That's how ambiguous it is to me. I'm like, doesn't everyone dislike getting punched in the no. face? But that's what I heard. That's what I you heard. You said that. Isn't everybody like, but no, everybody is not like that. I promise you everybody is not like that. Okay, but you know, <laughs> let me gauge your reaction because I will tell you, I do get the same reaction every single time I mention this. So my husband and my oldest, they're both Geminis. Oh Lord. That's the same reaction every time. What is that? You know, I could you not... Every time I mention that, they're like, oh, what's your husband's sign? I'm like, oh, he's a Gemini. <gasps> and they're like, what about your boys? Sister signs. I'm like, oh, my husband, my, my oldest is a, is, a, is a Gemini too. And they're like, oh my God, you got two of them in the house? My youngest, I don't know what, I don't know what he is. His birthday is March 9th. Oh, that's crazy. Even if I don't believe it. I don't oh, know Pisces. Time, right? He's a Pisces. I will Pisces. tell you, let me tell you something. Okay, now this was the only time I was like, I might believe in astrology. My youngest is that's gonna be your emotional so, kid. Bro. I was about to call you. I was about to give you a nickname. I was about to He's call you. To, I was about to say shy, but that's not your nickname. I apologize. I shortened your name. That's a, that's my is nickname. Really? That's my nickname. That is my nickname. So yeah. needy. Oh my like I have never experienced yeah, anything <laughs> like it. And I tell my best one of my best friends, Katie, who is very much like She's very much into that. Gives me crystals, tells me what to try, all that. She's just, oh, yeah. I kid you not. You, he will, when he was little, very he would sensitive. be crying. Even to this day, I'll be holding and they'll be like, why is he crying? I'll pick him up. And they're like, he's still crying. I have to put my face next to his face. His face has to be touching very sensitive, my uh, face. Being. I'm a Pisces moon, so I too am a very sensitive being. I can tell you, your son is going to be very sensitive. That is going to be, that's going to be your sensitive when child. I, when mm. I tell you, I said, I've never experienced anything like this. I have had patients as young as four. I've done family and child therapy. I've worked with <laughs> And I'm just like, and my mom was like, why is he still crying? I was like, watch this. Put his face next to my, <sighs> it's sick. 
<laughs> did you did you see how before you even said anything, I said, "Oh, that's gonna be a sensitive." Yes, child. I mean, and nobody like he he will and has slapped his brother in the face to get to me. He don't, don't play. Don't touch me. I want my mom. <laughs> this is this is gonna be like you know how we one oh one is like star signs. This is gonna be like one oh. This is gonna be like one oh three because it's aspects. Y'all square each other. So he. So in astrology, right, it's a wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, like the different degrees of a wheel. Sagittarius and Gemini are right across from each other on the wheel. They're sister signs, so they're like right across from each other. So they oppose each other, meaning there is, y'all want the same thing, just in different ways. And it's it can be like sometimes translating the, you know, two sides of the same coin, but just two <laughs> different, very different sides of time. Like Gemini's, Gemini's are, and I actually love like the pairing of Gemini and Sagittarius because Gemini's are more like thought, like they're, they will contemplate things. They talk a good game, like they're down, like for, they're always very busy social calendars and stuff, but like they talk a lot and Sagittarius is a very action. Like, so it's the dichotomy of like thought and action. A Sag might get irritated with a Gemini because the Gemini might talk a lot and they're just like, can you just do it already and shut the hell up? Okay. Sag and Gemini are like this. Pisces and Virgo are like this. So they are a, they make up a square at a 90 degree angle. And what that means in astrology is that there is tension between those placements. So if you have a Pisces, for example, with a Sagittarius and a, a Gemini, there's going to be a natural tension there because you aren't going to necessarily see exactly eye to eye you share a modality but you don't share an element and you don't share ooh, oh my god i'm blanking you don't share an you don't share an element and you it's the second thing that you don't share but you get the point being like there's tension there's a natural tension like y'all probably he will probably be and keep an eye out for this he'll probably feel a lot of the times like the odd man out so make sure you just give that baby some extra nurturance because where y'all are like thought in action he's going to be feeling like that's very much so. See, but I always say, and people, and you know what? I can always tell how people associate like what their thought process is with feelings or emotions. Because I always tell people like I'm a very emotional person, and people who get me and who see emotions as like a positive thing will be like, I can see that. But people who see emotions as a weakness will be like, Oh, I could never see you as being emotional, and it's because they're like, Oh, you're such a strong person, and I'm like, I'm a very emotional person and that's one of the best things about me is that I'm incredibly emotional like I literally have to see people like I can I was like I'm very emotional you think emotion is a weakness and it's not like being emotional is like one of mm. the best things about me incredibly emotional but I think that's positive like I can genuinely be like oh it's a lot of feelings in here I have to go I think <laughs> with astrology like with astrology specifically I think like people process emotions differently and where and it's mainly the moon sign, but where like fire, which is what you are, you are more action oriented when it comes to emotion. Like you would probably do more, do better, like being more expressive, like emotionally versus air where they like analyze their feelings. They're, they're more like, okay, this logically doesn't make sense. So I'm going to move on from this feeling for now. And I'll probably feel it later. That is how like air, which is Gemini. That's how they operate. Water is very much so I'm going to inundate myself in this whole emotion and I'm going to let it like encompass like my entire being. They're going to sit in it and they're going to really feel it like deeply, especially Pisces. Pisces feels it the deepest. Some people would say Scorpio. I would say Pisces, but it's yeah, it's going to be, it's different. It's very different. different. It's, it's a rock to our household and everybody knows he does not want anybody but his mom. And I'll just be like, yo, this is excessive. That's got to be the most of the common thing. I said, oh, this is excessive. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> you you, you got to chill. I can't fathom it. Yeah. I might look something up, but we'll see. Uh -huh. Because yeah. no, I just, it's a lot. That I went, I, that was the first time I was like, man, if I ever believe in astrology, it would be because I have never experienced anyone like this child in my life. Like, oh my gosh. All I'm saying is if you get into that synastry, that family synastry chart, you can see how all y'all overlap with each other and how y'all can vibe out. That's all I'm saying. Have you ever seen That's have you ever I'm seen saying. that meme where the, the little boy is the, the teenager is texting his mom and he's what time was I born? And the mom texts back, get away from that girl. 
So <laughs> no, because you can you can you can learn so much about somebody that way, like, and if you believe in astrology. Because I know we have non-believers here, but like you really could learn a lot, like somebody's wounds, for example. Like when I read my client's chart. My eyes zero in on the Chiron and the Lilith. And if you know, those are asteroids that really talk about the wounds that we face in life, like the things that are the deepest wounds that we have. I think astrology is a beauty and aspects to the moon in Pluto. But like those, astrology is a beautiful thing. And I think if you use it as an introspective tool, you either walk away, huh, this actually doesn't resonate with me and I'm glad, or you walk away with, damn, this is like something that I can work on or try and better in my life. And nine times out of 10, it's the second one. No shade. <laughs> the shade was thick. The shade was thick around these parts, please. <laughs> okay, so what about, because this is a question that we got. What about when people try to use it to justify like poor behaviors? Oh, th- how, how do people, how do you deal with the people who try to make it become their entire personality? And without, yeah, without doing the work needed to become their best self and stating that. I think from this question, they're kind of saying, if someone's just, oh, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a Sagittarius, I I don't have to soften my delivery or something like that. Like, what... Uh, that's a mental thing too? Yeah, I was going to say this might be problematic, but same thing I say about people who use their trauma to justify it. Your trauma is an explanation. Not it's an not excuse. a justification. Yes, like, thank you. God, please, to touch, I hate to bring up people pleasers because the people pleasers are still mad at me to this day. Yeah. They are not fans of mine. People pleasing, for example, is something that's birthed out of trauma, often is birthed out, birthed out of trauma. And people often, when I say like people pleasing is a manipulative behavior, they're like, you can't say that because it's rooted from trauma. And it's, it being rooted from trauma does not mean that the behavior that is a result of that is not any less like manipulative. Like a lot of the times people who are pathological liars, like have trauma that caused them to lie pathologically. It's not, it's not a shocking like people who are actual narcissists, like they, they often have like really deep trauma and wounds that lead them to that behavior. That it's just an explanation. It's not a justification. It doesn't mean that you get to use that as a shield to do and perform any type of behavior you want. And it's important to be open to reflection and growth, no matter what it is. It could be astrology. It could be trauma. I don't care what it is. There's no explaining something is not the same as justifying it. That's my response to that. It's not because I think there's a... I don't care if you were Sagittarius. (laughs) Watch your mouth. I feel like it's different. Okay. Even something such as as simple as, oh, you know, I get overwhelmed when there's a bunch of people talking to me. It's difficult. That's different than stating, I can't, you know, I can't control how I act when, you know, when I'm dealing with one of my anxious spirals. Like, that's just how it is. You can't invalidate me. And it's, I'm sorry, what? Well, that's, that's not the same thing. You know, the, the aspect of it's, it's, it's not something that controls you. And I also think it incredibly invalidates the people who work on it every single day. Like when people try to stay, like specifically exactly. who, who, with Kanye West, it comes up all the time. And I'm like, you know, you still have, you have your mental diagnosis, which is a fingerprint, but that also intertwines with your personality. If you were a jerk beforehand, that's just intertwining with your, you know, it, it really, it completely invalidates all the work that people with bipolar disorder or people with borderline personality, like it really disparages like the people who I know. I was like, I know a patient who, who works on this daily. With it. And then honestly, Kanye West being diagnosed with this yeah. makes them so pissed off. God, I don't even want to tell nobody my diagnosis because they gonna think I'm Kanye. <laughs> you know? And it's not the same. You really have to understand that mental health diagnoses are intertwined with people's personality. And the same way you don't like certain aspects of people's personality, you think that's going to change because they got a diagnosis? No. That's who they are. All right. Exactly. Which is ridiculous. And I do want to say, I also, with astrology, it's a uh, time to turn it off. <laughs> I will be the first to say. Because there have been times when I will be talking about something dead, dead serious, and somebody will be like, what do you think about this from an astrologer? I don't care about that. That is not relevant right now. We are talking about world events. I don't give a damn about a goddamn astrology. So if you're listening to this, there should be a balance. Like you do have to turn it off. And often, even with the Megan Thee Stallion situation, when she was going through the Tory Lanez thing, I, this is the best example I can think of. Somebody was like, you do know she's an Aquarius. 
I said, you do know you sound ridiculous. Right? So there is, it's all a balancing act. That's my opinion on that. But yes, to everything you said, it is very much so important for you to understand that because, you know, racist, racist will slap that. Oh, I have autism. They're like, it's like autism does not Yo. make you racist. That is just not, it's not a I thing. Like- Bipolar disorder does not make you racist. Depression doesn't make you racist. That's just not how that works. Yeah. I'd be like, what does that have to do with this? <laughs> oh, I have a goldfish. What are you talking about? What are you? I thought we was just saying stuff that didn't matter. I thought we was just saying stuff that didn't have anything to do with this. I had Cheerios for breakfast. Since we're just saying stuff. And people always, I'm not sure people expect the same thing from you. You know, as a clinician, you should, as a clinician, I can suss out some BS. Don't play with me. Okay. As someone who has actually seen it, as someone who like, no, that's your racism, honey. I mean, you can be a person with ADHD and autism and you're racist okay like i'm just these are these yeah. are all things but no i don't think i don't think it was your autism you decide that it was appropriate to call me the n-word honey because i disagreed with you that's your racism yes i think you know it's i think a lot of people will be like oh you know clinicians are and, and you may be different so you tell me if you're different but it's like the clinician aspect of it as being a psychologist be like oh you know you're more understanding and i am more understanding and i actually my threshold for stupidity is I, I think it's lower than most because as someone who sees people go through the hardest things in their life, you using a diagnosis as a justification, you know, and I, 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 the most basic thing that makes me upset is I really don't mean people <laughs> because I'm like, you just said this and I bet you somebody's in their session crying about this and you just like, like being a clinician, honestly, if anything, it makes me nothing you buck more, to be honest, because I'd be like, so you thought it was appropriate. Yeah. For you to just disparage somebody because, oh, because that's your journey. Because you healing, not healed. I'll knock you out. That's not how you treat people. <laughs> do you see a different? Do you feel like I'm no different? <laughs> and that's what look, the people can't stand it sometimes. I'll be like, and they just expect me to, they think that we're supposed to be like kumbaya, my mm-hmm. lord, for some reason. I just, this is never going to happen for me. I, in fact, I will probably be the first to tag you up if you say something that's just like unnecessarily cruel. And I won't match energy, you know, and I don't believe in letting too many people control yeah. your energy, but I will match it if you try to take I it. I know, there. they be thinking. So I can guarantee you won't try to take it there. They be yeah. thinking it's going to be kumbaya. And I'd be more like, I'll get that up. I'll be like, look, seems like we're both here. <laughs> what, you, what you thought was going to happen. You're such a Sagittarius. I just genuinely, like, I genuinely, I gen- like when people are mean to people, I, I do a good job of checking with the person and be like, can I? Because I'm about to go off. If they're like, I'm not in the mood, fine. But if you're mean to someone around me and I give them a look and they say, fine, oh, I'm going off. First of all, how if- <laughs> Uh, how dare the gauze you legit want to be mean to somebody around me it's a bad idea don't be mean to someone around me like everyone out there like just don't because i i just be like i know you thought she was mean but i bet you didn't think that the, the meanest person in the room was the psychologist <laughs> did you and i'm so smart it comes out so quick it yeah. surprises me it's i'm in therapy too guys I'm in therapy too. <laughs> I gotta be like, yo, doc, actually, this Literally. last time was actually pretty bad. And I'm also concerned. It was also, I'm concerned at how entertaining it was for me to snap it up. Like- I love it. No shame. I mean, but I'm no better. I cannot say anything. Uh, I can do nothing but justify it. I'm, so. gonna have to have you come back. <laughs> I'm probably not the best litmus for this. I'm gonna have you come back because I still want to talk about. I want to talk about social media and content creation. Okay, so if that's your if that's your nickname, can I call you Shy now? Am I like going to do that? Like, yeah, I'm just short. I'm like, I just shorten your name. I'm like, man, that is super rude. <laughs> no, that's my. That's actually my nickname. A lot of people don't call me that, but like people who do, I'm like, oh, cool, whatever. <laughs> okay. I'm one of the cool kids, guys. Like, just the, just the heads up. <laughs> I'm awful stamp of approval. So tell, okay, so tell everybody where they can find you because I guarantee you, anybody who can get Raquel to talk about astrology, people are going to want to find you. I guarantee you. Because I've been saying, listen, I kid you, I'd be like, listen, every time somebody asks me my sign, I'd be like, please don't. I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do it. I'm on TikTok. Instagram and YouTube under the same name, Shaheem, but with a five, five H A H E M. That's it. Yes. And be prepared to learn and laugh. I, you know, some of my favorite accounts are like edutainment. 
like education and entertainment. And I'm always like, you know, <laughs> some people who be, I'll be trying to encourage people, more people to go on social media when they're licensed therapists. And I'm like, you know, you can do it. You can really do this. But some people I'll be like, nah, this was dry. You should, you know, I think there has to be, <laughs> there has to be a combination. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they're okay. Learning doesn't have to be boring. Like I can legit break down a, a research article with a, I did a whole series with Megan Thee Stallion. And I'm like, this is, and this is some, this is some good stuff. It's supposed to have to be boring. <laughs> you know, like I think more of us need to be out there because you have whole accounts where people are just like, just think happy thoughts. And I just be like, and how many followers? 72 million. Child. Brand, brand deals where they get a hundred, <laughs> they get a hundred thousand dollar brand deals to, <laughs> to play with a fidget spinner. And I, we over here trying to break down the patriarchy, provide voice to the historically excluded, provide psychoeducation. And they'd be like, okay, so we want 27 videos and we'll give you some bloom tea. What do you say? And you're like, what? I'm like, what you mean? I'm not a license. I'm a Taurus. I don't move if the check ain't big. <laughs> don't be sorry. It won't be it won't, me. Listen, I, I remember this one time, somebody sent me something about an affiliate deal and I had been super tired. And I remember responding, I create content for cash, not merch. And after I sent it, I read it the next day and I was like, dang, what time did I send this? This is this is shorter than normal. I sent it at 12 o'clock. This was the mm. best way to work out. <laughs> yeah. I do not work for... No, you, you're right though. I don't work for gifts. I don't work for, for commission. I don't do any of that, baby. You need, I need the money up front. Yeah. Okay? Pay me my money. Look, because it's at the end of the day, I don't. But that's the thing that they try to do with us in helping professionals. Mm -hmm. They try to make us like work for compassion and, you know, all. No. My landlord, I don't know if you own, I got a landlord. He is not going to take, hey, they gave me some bloom tea. Dude, can I give that to you instead? Yeah. I tell my students all the time, I'd be like, don't let anybody tell you that this is supposed to be solely about altruism, okay? Because nobody's going to be compassionate when you have nowhere to live, okay? And I was like, and, and I, this is exactly. actually typically my segue. I'm like, now, since I mentioned that, let's also talk about, let's talk about the intersection of the, the unhoused population, mental health, and the justice. System. That's legit my segue every time. I'm like, since we're oh, talking wow. about this, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, because you know, I can make a segue out of anything. I'm like, tell me more about liberation within policy. Tell me, talk to me more about abortion rights. I can... Megan, you know, Megan Thee Stallion. Okay. I did a whole, I did a video when okay, yeah. <laughs> I did a video where they were like, don't nobody want to hear about anybody's pussy being depressed. I'm like, right. Well, one thing you need to understand is that when someone is upset, their entire body is upset. You know, if someone is depressed, they're so in, 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 in all actuality, what are we talking about when it comes to diagnostic criteria? Libido. Make sure you guys also ask about libido <laughs> during assessment. I'm like, listen, give me another one. <laughs> I'm like, you also need to ask about libido and over, you know, talk about it, y'all. And they're like, God, she just, I'm like, that's how it goes. You can also talk about numbing behaviors and hypersexuality. And I'm just like, it could be their sex drive or it's an aversion technique instead of them deciding to be present. They just, I'm going to just smang everything, um, everything. <laughs> and then I'm not going to have to do it. Y'all can use everything for um, learning guys. So once again, thank you for coming on the show. You're definitely coming back. Because we have to do, I have to do a whole, I, would absolutely I have to do a whole to. like thing birth talking chart. about, no, I wasn't even saying birth, birth chart. chart. <laughs> I wasn't even saying that. I was about to ask. You got to do a birth chart. I was going to say. Sorry, I'm bullying you into doing a birth I was going to say licensed therapists on social media and the BS they deal with. That's what I was going to say. We needed an episode on <laughs> Well, thank you for coming to the show. Everyone, you can see all of the information on the show notes. And remember, be kind to yourself. Two steps forward and one step back is still one step forward. That is just math, y'all. So just chill a little bit. All right? Have a good one.